Welcome back, I'm Marco Lomano. The Climate Adaptation Center's goal is to fill the gap between what science knows and what people think they know. And while it's easy to become pessimistic about red tide or pesticide runoff into our rivers, the goal of the inaugural Climate Champions event is to take the energy of recent climate victories and give it a path to travel. Joining me are Climate Adaptation Center CEO Bob Bunting and owner of Child's Hospitality, Ed Childs. Welcome both of you. Thank, Thank you, you, Marco. Uh, nice to be here. So nice, uh, nice to have both of you here. Uh, Bob, welcome back for the 28,000th time. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> but but a, a good just welcome in general to you, Ed. And I want to start with you, Bob. Uh, tell us about this inaugural event, Climate Ch uh, Champions, and what you're looking to do. Well, you know, we have such uh, issues here in Florida being, you know, in sort of a the ground zero for climate warming and we really want to inspire people uh, to take a their life and to understand uh, what we can do to better our situation and that's why the climate Ad adaptation center was formed it's a ground up approach and so this particular meeting we're having the celebration really is to honor those helping making the climate better and all the subsystems of the climate like clean water conservation protecting our environment so our 4,000 uh, newsletter readers have nominated a number of people and Ed Childs is one of those but we have a great lineup Bill Waddell from the Bay Jennifer uh, and David Schaefer Charles Reif John Thaxton in order to inspire all of you out there. We want to spend some time honoring them so that we know that we have good stewards and encourage others to be climate entrepreneurs, if you will. Yeah, and I know when I talked um, at the, the climate conference that you had hosted last month, I mean, we saw some of that pessimism uh, and from people who, you know, are have seen so many defeats over the years. And I remember a lot of what we were trying to do was to show them some of the successes and how to also take advantage of such. And that actually leads me now to you, Ed, the son of former Governor Lawton Childs, and you have done a lot of work uh, on this front. So what's been top of mind for you in terms of climate, especially in Florida and the environment? Well, a number of things, but what we have been focused on in the last two years since we had the environmental disaster at Piney Point is water quality issues. And it really goes back a lot further than that. We started s Solutions to Avoid Red Tide, the START organization, after the red tide out bloom of 95, 96, that lasted 11 months and 21 days. And we see red tides, harmful algal blooms, ligmia, blue-green algae, cyanobacterias happening more and more frequently, lasting longer and being stronger. And so after the Piney Point, 220 million gallons of uh, nutrient-laden water went into our national estuary at Tampa Bay. You know, under the premise of never waste a crisis, we set out to start uh, an effort called All Clams on Deck. Uh, we know clams clean water. We know that seagrass is, and clams are very important parts, the very bottom layer of the trophic system. And we know that we sit here on the edge of the largest gulf in the world. The only place in the country that has three national estuaries. And those waters are in trouble. We can't just keep developing and doing all the things we're doing with the, not dealing with uh, adequate wastewater treatment systems, stormwater runoff, all of those things, and expect nature to handle it. Nature can handle a lot, but we've got to promote coastal resiliency. So what we want to do is use biological mitigation strategies around bivalves, specifically clams here because they grow so well, and seagrass to promote coastal resiliency. Uh, and it's interesting what you said about uh, red tide lasting longer. Uh, this latest bout, we're doing a lot better as of right now, this latest bout just seemed like that unwelcome party guest who just never wanted to go. That's right. And after Hurricane Ian and all of the nutrients, all of the wastewater treatment facilities that overflowed, all of the stuff that came down there, you know, that those coastal areas have got a lot of nutrients in them and that's the gas that feeds the fire of the naturally occurring organism, uh, the microalgae that is red tide. It's, we're not gonna stop that, but what we've gotta do is make the forest better able to recover after the fire, if you will. And I appreciate you sharing that with me, and Bob, always great to see you again. Wonderful, thank you so much. You are welcome, thank you. Thank you, Marco.